And one woman, a white woman, came up to me for prayer. Her son, 22 years old, a youth pastor of Morningstar Church, was killed in a car accident. She cried and she cried and she cried, unconsolably. She said, please pray for us that our broken heart should be consoled. When I prayed for her, I remembered my own associate. So I prayed with a broken heart that God will console her. And before I left, she gave me a newsletter about her, her son that Rick Joyner had wrote. So after the meeting, when I went back to the hotel room, I sat down to read the newsletter. And Brother Rick Joyner had written a glowing tribute about the boy. What an exemplary life he lived, how he was a great role model to all the youths in the church, and what a fine Christian he was. And they were going from their Charlotte to another city for an inter-church basketball match. And as they were driving in the car, a truck came from nowhere, hit on the car, and this 22-year-old boy died on the spot. So when I read that, I thought about my associate, and I broke down and I cried. I just cried and I asked the Lord, if all the young people keep on dying one by one like this, then who is going to do your last day's youth ministry? As I was crying like this out of frustration in part, the Lord Jesus appeared before me and he looked at me and he said, you are behaving just like any other of my ordinary people. With tears running, moisturing my eyes, I looked at him and said, what do you mean, Lord? You know, how can you let this 22-year-old boy die? You let my 27-year-old son die. Now you let this 22-year-old boy die. And then you will let other people die. Then who will serve you? Again, he repeated, you are speaking foolishly like a baby, like any other person who does not know my kingdom. I said, what do you mean, Lord? And that's when the Lord said, I am taking them to be part of my spiritual army. Because I need an army in the spiritual realm who will come and work together with this earthly army. They need both together the earthly and the spiritual. And as the Lord spoke this, he said, now lift up your eyes and look up. And when I looked up, the ceiling of the hotel room disappeared. And I saw into heaven, and I saw two white horses. They were galloping from the heavens right into my hotel room. And when they came in, you know, it's a full-size horse, white horse. And right on the first horse was this American boy, his name is Stephen Coffey. I recognize him because there was a picture of him on the newsletter. And the young man on the second horse was my associate. His name is Andrew. So they were both on the horses. And this American boy, he had a weighing scales in his hand. Do you know weighing those old-fashioned scales? He had that in his hand. And there were coals of fire on the scales. He looked at me and he said, Sir, whenever you conduct a youth meeting, we will come to this meeting and we will stand all around the auditorium. Our army will stand with you. And when you pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for the youths, we will throw these coals of fire upon the youths and they will all get baptized in the Spirit. Now, that is the work they are doing in the spirit. So, although uh, a loss is painful to us, but it is better in that way. And you know, many of these young people who die, I have noticed, they are all virgins. Whether it is a girl or a boy, I have noticed. Even my brother Neville's daughter, when she died, 18 years old? Ah. You know, many of them, they are virgins. And there is a scripture 
in Revelation chapter 14, verses 1 to 5, they say, where they, the company that follows the Lamb of God wherever they go, they are virgins. That does not mean the married don't die. So, this is a kind of martyrs. They are also martyr because they are a witness for the Lord. So, a young person, a teenager, when they die, or when their Lord allows it in unexplainable circumstances, it only means one thing. If they are a godly Christian person, they have just been transferred from this army to another army. That's all. Just a transfer. You know, a transfer. You know, when my associate died, I saw him several times in the spirit. And he told me the purpose, you know, the reason why they got married from God's perspective. He came and he explained to me why this marriage was done. What is the purpose? And then he told me, he said, please tell my wife. Or he didn't use the word wife. He said, please tell your daughter. I will come and help her in the ministry that God has assigned for her. This is now my part, to come and work together with her in the spirit. And I never told my, uh, his wife all this, you know, because she was still grieving over that. I just kept it to myself. But the several times that I have seen her flowing in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I've always seen her husband come and stand beside her in the spirit, working together. See, the spiritual army working together with the earthly army, releasing a power that is more powerful than if they were in person physically. See, God's ways are mysterious. We cannot understand. But we need to trust in the goodness of God. He's a good God no matter what happens. A good God. You know, Brother Neville, he shares, I'm sure he has said many times, a long while before his daughter died, she already knew she was going to die. She wrote him a long letter detailing in exact order how the funeral service should be conducted. What song to sing, how everything should be done, all in precise order. She knew beforehand. And then she signed, saying, I'm a seed. And that is the exact word the Lord told me, what a martyr is. There are a seed sown in the ground. John chapter 12, verse 24. Unless a corn falls down to the ground and die, it abides alone. So the last day's martyrs, they also prepare the way for the coming of God's kingdom. The second group that's going to rise up, the second ministries are a huge company of prophets. And there will be seven kinds of prophets that will be risen up. Who, who will have seven kinds of the anointings of the seven eyes of the Lamb. If you read Revelation chapter 5 verse 6, the Apostle John saw the Lamb of God and it, it has seven eyes. And the eyes always speak of prophetic giftings. So what are the seven kinds of prophets that will rise up in these last days? A dear friend of mine in India received this revelation from the Lord about the seven kinds of prophets that will rise up. Number one, they will rise up and to prepare the way of the Lord by casting down evil and resurrecting good. Okay, what do we mean by that? Casting down evil. If you read for an example, Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 1 to 13, the prophet Ezekiel will be taken in the spirit to a secret place in the temple in Jerusalem. There you will find some Jewish people doing evil in the temple. 
And the chief among them is a man called Palate. And the Lord will tell Ezekiel, now prophesy to him that he will die. Now Ezekiel is standing in the spirit. And he prophesied and Palatel dropped dead in the natural. So you will command and cast down evil. Now resurrecting good. Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 1 to 10. Again he was brought in the spirit to a valley of dry bones. And the Lord asked him a question, can these bones all live? He said, only you know, Lord. Then the Lord told him to prophesy to the bones. And when he prophesied, all the bones became alive. An exceedingly great army. So raising up, resurrecting good and casting down evil. So in the last days, one group of prophets will go forth to do this. Second group of prophets. They will command war or direct war in heaven. Or they will become like generals directing a war in either direction. A good example of this is Revelation chapter 12, <coughs> verses 7 to 11. Now, if you will take a little time now to turn your Bible to Revelation chapter 12, you will notice that verse 7 says, There is war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels and there was no place to be found in heaven and the dragon and these angels were all cast down to earth. And verse 10 says, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and blah, 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 blah. Now, <laughs> I don't mean that in irreverence. Please don't mistake me, okay? I'm just going to go to the most important part. Now, in verse 7, I, I would like you to follow with me verse by verse. Verse 7 says, Michael and his angel fought against the dragon and his angels. Everybody agrees? Okay, so please keep in mind the war is between Michael and his angels against the devil and his angels. Please keep that in mind. So it is angels, not humans. Everybody agrees? Yeah. Okay. Now look at verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Now, here is a problem. How can angels overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb can they no the blood of the lamb of god is not for angels right okay now this is problem number one now look at problem number two and by the word of their testimony now the angels don't need the word of god do they no this is problem number two now problem number three and they love not their lives unto death. Can angels die? No, if they cannot die. So they, the angels don't need the blood of the lamb. The angels don't need the word of testimony. The angels cannot love their lives unto death. If this is not angels, then who are they? The last day's company. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But in verse 7 says, Is Michael in his company that fought the war? How do we reconcile? In uh, 1991, when there was the war in Iraq, and the American army with the Allied forces, they overcame Saddam Hussein, and they liberated Kuwait from Iraqi stronghold, and all the newspapers splash the news. Bush won the war. But Bush was sitting in the Pentagon. He was not in Iraq. It's the American soldiers who were in Iraq, but the Pentagon officials were sitting there in Pentagon and they were directing the war where the soldiers should go. Go here, go there. Bush as the commander in chief was giving the orders, the executive orders, what they should do. 
So the second group of company of prophets will work together with the warrior angels to command and direct war in heaven and against the earthly enemies where war should be conducted. You will direct it where the war should be done because you are the captain on this earth. You know, in the year 1984, the Lord sent me, or 85 I think, to liberate a family from demon possession. The whole family was harassed by demons. Now I'll make a long story short. If not, we will continue till Sunday morning. <laughs> I'm sure you don't want that, do you? No, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I came to the house on a Saturday. So I was going to, and then uh, after talking to the family, I went to my room and knelt down to pray. When I knelt down to pray, the Lord told me, tonight there's going to be a battle in the heavenlies. And the evil spirits are going to come to attack you. Now this is what you need to do. Exactly at 12 midnight, kneel down, lift up your hands and start worshipping God. So that was the assignment that was given to me. So at 11.55, I got up, prepared myself, and I knelt down, prepared my heart, and exactly at 12 midnight, I lifted up my hands, and I began to worship God. As soon as I did that, a mighty, powerful warrior angel suddenly appeared in my room. He was so huge and muscular, like how the Bible describes as the angel, very bronze looking, and had the armor all over him, fierce, fiery eyes, and a long drawn sword in his hand. And he said, the battle is ready, sir. You know, this was 12 midnight. <laughs> and I was all alone in this room. And here comes this huge angel and very fiery, frightening looking one, and he shouts, the battle is ready, sir! So, <laughs> in all my petiteness, I was wondering, so if the battle is ready, why are you saying that to me? <laughs> but, I did not dare voice it out, you know? So I didn't know what to do. That was my first experience. So I prayed, Holy Spirit, what should I do now? Is this really an angel or a devil in disguise? <laughs> because I've never heard any angel come and say, Sir, addressing me as Sir, when he is the mighty angel. How can I be a Sir, you know? I'm a weakling. So then the Holy Spirit told me, now he is a angel, a warrior angel from Michael's order. So now you just tell him, okay, proceed. So I looked at him and said, okay, proceed. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> and he left. Suddenly he disappeared and my spiritual eyes were open and I saw in the mid heavens, this angelic army was, he was not one, it was an army. And they were on chariots of fire and horses of fire. And they all had their drawn sword. And the angel who came to me was the captain of the angels. And on the other side were all these evil spirits. You know, they all gathered in one side and these angels gathered on the other side. And this captain who departed from my presence, he had a shofar in his hand. And he blew the trumpet. When he blew the trumpet, the two forces clashed together. And they fought. I could hear with my ears, you know, the clashing of the swords. Clang, clang, clang. You know, all those sounds. <laughs> <laughs> and all the while, I was lifting up my hands and just praising God, worshipping God as I was told. And I saw this whole war for one earth hour. Exactly at 1 a.m., this captain took, drew his sword and cut the head of the captain of the evil force. And his head rolled down 
Wait, 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 the story hasn't ended yet. <laughs> and his head rolled down on the floor. You know, once you take the king out, the war is over, right? So, that's what I thought. Then this angel came back to my room again. And he said, the battle is over, sir. <laughs> so I said, no, what do I do now? <laughs> so I thought, since the battle is already over, why didn't you go back? <laughs> <laughs> so now I didn't know what to do next. So I prayed, Holy Spirit, what should I do next? Just tell him, okay, proceed. So I looked at him and said, okay, proceed. <laughs> and he disappeared. Now this was something very strange to me. Anyway, then the Holy Spirit told me what is going to be the aftermath of this war that took place in the heavenly. The, the witch doctor, the Hindu priest who did all this witchcraft against his Christian family, the Lord told me the judgment of God will come upon him where boils will appear on his legs from his waist downward. Big, huge boils will come all over him as a witness to the whole village that he has been judged by the true living God. Wait, 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 wait. And the following day, I prayed a prayer of blessing for the family. They were all set free and they live happily ever after. Three months later, the Hindu priest died of boils come all over his body. Now, after this event, I was very, very curious about the whole experience. So I wanted to know why these angels call me a sir. And why is it they should come and report to me before they could go for the war and before they left. So I took it up before the Lord in prayer. I fasted for several days asking the Lord for an answer. Then the Lord said, when a war takes place in the heavenlies, concerning a situation that involves humans. The human agency is the general of the war, the general of the Lord's army, and the angels will come and take orders from you. So then you tell them what needs to be done. But you just cannot simply say, if you don't like your mother-in-law, say, go and attack the mother-in-law. <laughs> Not <laughs> not not for that purpose, you know. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit will tell you what should you do. Then this whole army comes to work together, and they will come and take directions from you, and you direct the army. Okay, this is where you go. This is what you should do because the battle plans will be given to you. Like what Neville shared this morning about we have been made the God of this world. So if, you, if we be the God of this world, we have our authority in this world. For the angels to come, they cannot trespass. So they need one human agency. To, that's why we need to pray. When we pray, it creates a portal of opening for God to come, for the angels to come. Because the devil has bots all over in the spiritual realm saying, no trespassing. So this is something very legal in the spiritual realm. But when the people of God pray and the angels of God come in answer to prayer, when the demons stop them, they will legally say, I'm going because we have been called. That gives them the legal right to come. See, that is why prayer is important. We need to pray. Amen? Yes. The third group of prophets, they will demonstrate the glory of God openly for all to see. For example, Moses, in Exodus chapter 19, verses 16 to 19, he prepared an entire group of three million Israelites to see the glory of God. 
you know, three million Israelites on that day saw with their naked eyes the glory of the Heavenly Father coming down on Mount Sinai. Three million eyes saw the chariots of God, the angels of God, and the saints of God come down on Mount Paran. Everyone saw with their own naked eyes. And how was this event possible? Because the prophet Moses prepared the people to meet with God. To, for them to see the glory of God openly. Not only for the saints of God, for also for the enemies of God. You will call like Elijah calling down fire from heaven. You will demonstrate the glory of God. The fourth kind of the prophets. They will preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 24 verse 14. And Revelation chapter 11 verse 3 tells us that even when the two witnesses are here, they will prophesy and preach the gospel of the kingdom for three and a half years. Now, the prophets number five, the fifth group, they will reveal secrets of the enemies. Like Elisha the prophet, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8 to 14. Our brother Neville shared yesterday about that. About how that the secrets of the enemy, you know, where some mines are planted, some plants of the enemy here, plants of the enemy there, so that the people of God in the journey will be liberated, will be protected, will be safe. Revealing of the secrets of the enemy. You will be taken in the spirit to the enemy's camp. You will be translated even in the body. Or you will be translated in the soul. Just like the experience of Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 5. When his servant Kayasi went to receive bribes from Naaman. And then when he came back, Elisha tells him, When not my heart with you when you were taking money, those things. You know, the word heart in the Hebrew means soul. It's not heart, it means soul. So what happened was, the soul of Elijah came out of his body, just like the spirit will travel, the soul also can take on a form. The, your soul also looks exactly like you, just like your spirit looks exactly like you. So it can also travel independently. The spirit can travel independently. The soul can also travel independently. And the spirit and soul can combine together and also go together. There are various ways, you know. There's no limit to the spiritual realm. But in this particular case, Elisha's soul departed. And he was there witnessing the whole thing of the evil that KRC has done. So, and that is also to reveal the secrets of the enemy. Number six, prophets who will gather <coughs> lost scrolls. You know, from the time of Adam, God has revealed many secrets to Adam, to Abraham, to all our patriarchs, Enoch, and all they have written in scrolls. And all those scrolls have been kept hidden in this earth from all these thousands of years. Thousands of years. Even in the pyramid of Giza. You know the pyramid of Giza was built by Enoch the prophet. Brother Neville had the privilege to be taken in the spirit to that time when the pyramid was built and he saw the prophet Enoch overseeing the construction of the pyramid of Giza. Not the other pyramid. Only the pyramid of Giza, the, the largest pyramid with a bald head. And there are also scrolls hidden in the caves and in the holes of that pyramid waiting to be revealed in these last days. And even many, many scrolls written by the many prophets, you know, like Jeremiah, you'll read that, you know, 
in the book of Jeremiah, they were all hidden during the time when the Babylonian people came to invade Israel. The scrolls were all hidden from being destroyed. So where are they? They need to be retrieved and be brought back to heaven. There's a scripture there, you know, that says in John chapter 6 verse 12, that I gather those things that are lost. The Lord Jesus came to redeem and to gather back the things that are lost. That scripture not only refers to lost souls, but it also refers to this kind of things. And when the scrolls are retrieved back, such prophets, they die as like a martyr and their scrolls will go up. How is that possible? You know, our brother Neville shared an example uh, this morning, how he was given a scroll to eat. Do you remember? You see, when you hold the scroll, it goes into your body. Or like eating the scroll. It, it, your body becomes the carriers or the safety box of the scrolls. It's inside you. So the only way they can be taken up to heaven is when we die. So when you go up to heaven, all the scrolls go, back, go with you. They need to be re redeemed, reclaimed, even for these last days. Number seven, a company of prophets who will reveal God's commandments and laws during these last days. How are we going to live in the last days? Now we need a new set of laws. In Malachi chapter 4, verse 4, this is one of the work of the Moses anointing. You know, if you read Malachi chapter 4, verses 4, 5, and 6, two prophets are mentioned there, Moses and Elijah. He said, remember the commandments of Moses, and I will send you Elijah, the prophet. Two prophets will reappear in these last days. And this was what God revealed to me two years ago when I came here. The last days company of the Moses and Elijah. Two kinds of prophets that will rise up in the last days. Will all belong to one of these two groups. The Moses company or the Elijah company. And this was what we will, the works that we will do. Thirdly, the third kind of ministries that will be raised in the last days. Believers will be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation and they will reveal deep mysteries of God's word, revelations and hidden truths in these last days. Now if you read Revelation chapter 10 verse 7, it says, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Which means, from the time that the mysteries were first revealed to the apostle Paul, if you read the Pauline epistles, many, many mysteries were revealed to him. For example, if you read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 to 14, there he shares a mystery that has been hidden for ages, but now revealed to him for the New Testament church. So beginning from him, many mysteries will be revealed until the mystery of God is completed. So there will arise a group of prophets, Amen. Arise a group of company of people to whom God will release this anointing of the spirit of wisdom and revelation where you will begin to be taught by God, taught by the saints of heaven and even by the angels, the mysteries of God that should be released for this last day's prophetic remnant. Number four. The fourth kind of ministry. New manner of worship will be released in this world. 
and that new manner of worship is of seven kinds. I'm sorry, you know, it's already 10 p.m. Shall I stop? No. I have another three more points to go. Is it okay? Yes. Are you getting tired? No. Are you sleepy? No. Are you hungry? No. All right. Oh, yes? <laughs> if you are hungry, there is a junky food stall around the corner. <laughs> Okay, new manner of worship. There are seven kinds. Number one, the angel's way of worship. Now, so far we are only doing our kinds of worship. Now we will be taught the angel's way of worship that will be released on this earth. If you look at Revelation chapter 6, verse 11 to 12, and chapter 7, verse 11 to 12, the angels have a different kinds of worship. Secondly, the living creatures in heaven, they have their own kind of worship. Now that will be released. Revelation chapter 4, verse 6 to 9. John saw the four living creatures. They were worshipping God in their own language, in their own mannerism. Number three, now, number three is something very strange. In the book of Ezekiel, are your hearts open? Yes. You have no doubts? No. Will you believe like a little child? Yes. All right. Can I trust you? Yes. All right. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 15 to 21, you will read about how the prophet Israel saw a huge wheel that appeared together with the cherubim. Now the Lord told me, the wheels have a voice and they worship God. And that style or kind of worship will be taught to the last day's generation. Number four, worship in the Lord Jesus place you know the Lord Jesus has his own place of dwelling in heaven and there is a worship that goes on to him Revelation chapter 7 verses 9 to 17 so we'll be taught how to offer that kind of a worship to the Lord Jesus number five worship in the Father God's place the Father God is his own place of dwelling far away from all other places in heaven. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. Revelation chapter 11, verses 15 to 18. Worship that was given only solely to God the Father. Number 6. Worship in the place of the Holy Spirit. Although the Holy Spirit dwells everywhere, there are also worship given to the Holy Spirit. Revelation chapter 12, verses 10 to 12. Chapter 19, verse 5 to 6. And the voice that you will read in heaven, in the scriptures where you read, the voice, and the voice belongs to the Holy Spirit. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13 says, the voice is the Holy Spirit's voice. And number seven, Worship in praise of the victorious Lord. You know, when the Lord rises up to go forth in battle, there is a praise ascribed to Him for that. Revelation chapter 5, verse 8 to 10. So this is a new kinds of worship that will be released to in this last day's body, that we will offer this worship, this new praise, because praise and worship are powerful weapons. If you read 2 Chronicles chapter 20, when King Jehoshaphat was in a quandary where the enemies outnumbered him, the counsel of the Lord came unto him is, put, send forth your choir before the army. That was, you know, if you ever go to Pentagon with this formula, they'll lock you up in the <laughs> asylum, right? 
but this is a counsel from God. Send for the worshippers, and they were told what to worship. Not simply sing any kind of songs, jumping up and down like kangaroos. <laughs> no, they were clearly told what they should sing. They should praise the goodness of God, the mercies of God. Sing that His goodness and His mercies endures forever. That's all they sang continuously over and over again, and that release. You know, it's just praise that comes out of your mouth. But the words of praise that comes out of your mouth transforms as swords. They transform as swords. They come out of your mouth to strike your enemy. All different kinds of weapons will come out of your mouth. And you will just stand still. And the Lord will fight battles for you. How does the Lord fight battles for you? It is through this way. The words that come out of your mouth, they are swords. You will read in the Bible where it says, the sword came out of the mouth of the Lord Jesus to strike the people, right? And that's how swords will come out of your mouth. Not only swords, even spears, even sledgehammers. They, it's all in the word. You know, I've seen angels holding huge sledgehammers. Last year, Pastor Joe and I, we were at Los Angeles Airport, going to Houston. And while we were waiting for our number to be called, and suddenly I saw a mighty angel stand by my right side with a huge sledgehammer, about five feet in length by his right side. And he said, I have been sent to strike this city with an earthquake. And we were in Los Angeles. And when he spoke that, I saw his army of angels all standing in one straight line along the coast of Los Angeles, where I later identified that area to be the area where the St. Andreas Fault was, or is. Angels standing all over the line, everyone with a sledgehammer in their hands. And when the time comes, and God gives them the order, they will just bang! on the ground with a sledgehammer. And he also told me three places have been appointed in the US for a great massive earthquake to strike in the nation. I do not know what those places are, but I saw in the map of uh, the US, one was in the center of the US. What do you have in the center? The Great Madrid Fault? That's what I, I saw. And the another one, the other one is San Andreas, the Great Madrid, and the third one I do not know where. I just saw these angels standing. So all these weapons, they have these weapons in their hands. See, no earthquake takes place because some ge geological plates are moving here and there. That is the natural way of explaining it. But what caused the plates to move? They are these angels of destruction. They come and they strike on the ground and they stamp on the ground. And that causes massive earthquakes. Even the tsunami that came in Japan. You know, before the tsunami came, I saw angels. I was praying one morning, night, meditating the word of God at about 10 at night. And I saw three pairs of feet walking on the waters, the Pacific Ocean, towards just walking on the waters. And I, I lifted up my head and I saw these angels. And I asked them, where are you going? They said, we are going to Japan. We are going to shake the nation. And soon after came the earthquake and the tsunami. Nothing happens by accident. The nations are appointed for judgment. So, when you praise, these weapons will come out of your mouth to set the enemy to flight. Number five, the fifth kind of ministry is a ministry of intercession. And there are seven kinds of the ministry of intercession. You know, God told the prophet Moses when he built the tabernacle that incense must rise up continually. If you read Exodus chapter 30, verse 8, 
he was told that incense must rise up continually it is a perpetual covenant to be done forever and in revelation chapter 5 verse 8 and chapter 8 verse 3 you will also read that in heaven incense rises up continuously the prayers of the saints the prayers that rises up from the earth now there are seven kinds of intercessions now what are they number one praying together now before we go any further you must promise me one thing can i trust you yeah. that you will not misunderstand whatever i'm going to share with you don't take it out of context don't misunderstand don't think of anything otherwise and number two don't idolize them do i have your promise yes. really sure yes. okay now we'll go number one praying together with the saints in heaven revelation chapter 8 verse 3 now if you read revelation chapter 8 verse 3 it says that the angel brings incense from earth the prayers of the saints to be offered unto god but before he could offer the angel was given much incense to be added to this bowl of incense and then offered to God. Now, the, our problem is this. The first bowl that he has is an incense of prayers of saints from the earth. Then he was given much more incense. Now, where did this other incense come from? That incense comes from heaven. You know when people die on the earth, they all don't sit by some beaches in heaven with a harp, with a retirement home and sing, it sit there in the sweet by and by forever. Ministry continues. Activities in heaven continues day and night till the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the year 1997, I was in South Africa, Johannesburg, for a convention. And one afternoon, I, I was not speaking that afternoon. I just attended the meeting. And while the worship was going on, I heard the Holy Spirit say, look up to your left. And when I looked up, the ceiling departed. And I saw into heaven a place. And there was a huge rock. And I saw two saints one on the right side and one on the left side were kneeling down, putting their hands on the rock and they were praying with tears for South Africa. I heard them praying and I asked the Holy Spirit, who are they? And the Holy Spirit, the saint that you see on the right is Andrew Murray and the saint you see on the left is John G. Lake. I said, oh, they were praying. And then the Holy Spirit told me, you should share this publicly in the meeting. I told the Holy Spirit, do you want me to get killed? <laughs> See, these people never believe all these things. Say, it doesn't matter, just tell them. You know, the saints of God, when we complete our ministry on this earth, when we go on to heaven, we have our God-appointed responsibilities, our ministries. You cannot tell the saints what to pray. They will come and tell you what to pray. But you cannot tell them what to pray. They all have their responsibility. So when you pray, they will come to pray together with you. I have seen that many, many times in the last 33 years of my ministry. When I kneel down to pray, the saints come and join with me. And then I will ask them, what shall we pray today? And they will share with me some prayer points. Okay, this is what you should pray. This is what you should pray. So praying together with the saints of God. Secondly, praying together with angels. Can the angels pray? Zechariah chapter 1, verses 12 to 13. When you read it, you'll be shocked that there an angel of the Lord prays unto God. He will look up to God and he plead before God for Israel 
and then verse 13 says god comforts the angel by giving him a word of comfort say don't worry i have heard your petition this is what will take place so the angels also have their responsibilities not all classes of angels there are some classes of angels you know these are some fields that we don't have much understanding about mysteries but like i told you the other day it is the administrative style of god you and i have no right to question why do it this way why not that way so to praying together with the angels of god many times when i'm conducting a prayer meeting i see these angels come and stand beside me and they will tell me now pray for this point i never tell them publicly you know in my meetings in india i've never said to them an angel have come and this is how he wants us to pray i've never in fact this is the first time i'm speaking this publicly so number 3 praying together with the lord jesus christ the lord jesus will come to pray with us hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 he ever lives to make intercession for us either the lord jesus comes in the spirit while we are on earth to pray together with us or we are caught up to heaven and there to pray together with the lord jesus christ 